Rhubarb was wandering down the garden in a wondering sort of way, greeting the others with grins, when he stumbled and fell over a bit of old root. Oh! You should be going down, not up, don't you know? growled Rhubarb. But on further botanical investigation, it was quite clear that the old root was not in fact an old root, but an old book. Good heavens, mused Rhubarb in an interested sort of way, and pulled the book from the earth and poured his way through the pages. This must have fallen off my family tree, gasped Rhubarb, as he peered at the pages and into the past, face to face with his ancestors. Good heavens! Sir Rhubarb de Bone Idol. Well, well, and here's Sir Loin Steak, my great uncle. And look at this, Lord Hound of the Baskervilles. Well, I never... Ho, oh, oh, ho! Rhubarb, bone apart, my most famous ancestor. And good gracious me, here's Saint Bernard of Bavaria. And gosh, Baron de Boeuf. Well, I never, sputtered Rhubarb. Good heavens, good gracious me. Well, I never... Listen, everyone, knaves, serfs, and uh, etc. He began. I have reason to believe that because of some vital facts I have just seen in a book, which I shall digest later, that I, Rhubarb, am cleverer than the rest of you, because without doubt I am Sir Rhubarb. Yes, indeed. A knight. Custard gaped through the fence and said nothing. The birds changed their tune and the rest of the animals stopped what they were doing. So then, serfs, quipped Rhubarb, there will be sport on the green this day, just after three, jested he, and swept off up to the shed. Did I hear that fool say, just after three? inquired Custard. I'm afraid so, sighed a songbird. In the middle of the afternoon, the shed door fell off its hinges as Sir Rhubarb axed his way out into the garden and threw down a gauntlet to challenge the world. Uh, excuse me, soldier. Cackle Custard through the fence. You've dropped your glove. I'll drop you if you dare to take the field. Echoed Sir Rhubarb. I'll challenge anyone. He bellows in a hollow sort of way. Challenge? Huh, shrugged Custard. He couldn't say boo to a goose, grinned he, gaining an idea on the spot. <laughs> wow, we don't know a goose, pondered Custard. But we do know Rover the duck, and she's always good for a laugh. When Rover arrived, she took up the challenge straight away stood her ground, and Sir Rhubarb took a swing, lost his balance, keeled over, and lay on the lawn, livid. Wow, that's cooked his goose, sows to say, cracked Custard, and Rover went into raptures, and the birds went wild. Anyone like to join me for fencing? Grinned Custard. One evening, when even the birds had stopped squeaking, Rhubarb was tiptoeing about the garden, muttering mutters to himself. What's that noodle brain dog up to at this unearthly hour? Yawned Custard, and spied through the fence with a cat's eye to business. And one here, and one there, and one under that, 
muttered Rhubarb in a mumbling sort of way, as he buried bones all over the garden, ready for the hunt the bone game at his garden party. There, that should do very nicely. Thank you very much, Rhubarb, said Rhubarb, licking his lips as he planted the very last of the bones, knowing full well that he'd win the game because he knew where all the bones were. What a smart dog you are. The great bone rush should make me a fortune, he grinned as he collapsed wearily into his bed. Jumping mackerel, a fortune, eh? Whistled Custard and crept off into the night. As the moon covered herself up with big fluffy clouds and rocked herself to sleep, Custard spent the darkened hours making himself a fortune by hawking a few bad deeds to land he didn't even own. Well, uh, that's the very last one, grinned Custard as he sold the final plot of land, told everyone that there were bones in them thar hills, and loitered off with the loot. Rhubarb's alarm clock was getting a bit wound up about ringing, but with so much noise outside, there wasn't any need to bother. Rhubarb rolled over, opened an eye, then the other, and looked out with great amazement which very quickly turned into an even greater anger. I demand to know what's happening! Rhubarb screamed at the top of his bark as he stamped his paw and glared out onto something that looked like Klondike High Street on a Saturday. This is my garden! Who gave you permission to dig holes all over it? Stop that digging immediately! demanded Rhubarb. Push off, green on! grizzled a battered old panhandler. And with that, Rhubarb turned tail and slunked off back up to the house. The world's gone mad. I didn't invite any of these gangsters to my garden party. Yet they're all here digging up my bone game, shrugged Rhubarb, just as he saw Custard's fat face grinning over the fence, and the whole crazy situation fell into place. I might have known he'd spoil everything, sniffed Rhubarb in a sad sort of way. Oi, oi, <laughs> here. Here's a bone, shouted a big gruff geezer. Here is another. What? <laughs> Rubber bones? Here, what's the game? Demanded a big husky dog from Alaska. <laughs> Hunt the rubber bone. <laughs> Hunt the rubber bone at the garden party, shouted Rhubarb from up at the house, and Custard's greedy grin fell off his face. Oi, cat. We got a rubber bone to pick with you, growled 500 mad dogs as Custard set off over the hill. <laughs> oh, you can't beat a morning run, I always say, grinned Rhubarb. Now, where did I hide my bona fide breakfast? <laughs> on the warm air and dragonflies were weaving barn dances over the reeds and Custard was staring into the water at the fish who were staring back. I uh, wonder just how deep this pond is, mused Custard with an evil twinkle in his eye. Bottomless, some say, said he, dipping his paw into the water. Wow, there's only one sure way to find out, and that's what I aim to do. Deep pond diving expedition today. Anyone who wants to come along, meet at the pond at one o'clock, shouted Custard. 
Rookie shrugged and sighed. Custard had never been known to have an idea in his life. Well, here's a turn of events. Old Custard with an idea, mused Rhubarb, sitting on the fence. I must make the most of this, he grinned, and so with one very wide yawn, he declared, Oh, Custard, must you disturb the peace today? We're all trying to sunbathe. Jacques Custard does not care for sunbathing, smirked Custard. Water bathing, if you don't mind. You may join me if you wish. Underwater swimming? I wouldn't go out in a rainstorm with you in charge, sniggled Rhubarb, and all the birds jumped about with delight. Rhubarb had worked out there could be only one motive for this newfound interest in deep pond diving, and that one motive must be deep pond fishing. Wow, he said to the fish, you'd better be prepared. Up in the shed, Jacques Custard was busy making lots of noise and an underwater swimming machine. All the birds squeaked with delight when the shed door burst open and Jacques Custard, deep pond diver, stumbled out and flip-flopped his way into the pond. Rhubarb jumped up and down, trying to break the fence with laughter. But alas, the fence stood firm. He wasn't as fat as Custard. Jacques Custard took not the slightest notice of the scoffing, but proceeded into the water and looked about. How strange, echoed Custard. The place was teeming with fish when I looked down from up there. How very odd. Up on the side of the pond, Rhubarb and the birds were all sitting round with fishing rods and reeling with laughter, together with the fish who were wearing moonfish bowls. I do believe there are catfish in this pond, barked Rhubarb, and all the fish gurgled with delight. All except custard catfish, who surfaced in a very angry mood. The fish thanked Rhubarb and plunged back into the pond. One day, I'll perfect deep pond fishing, and when I do, you fish just watch out. Jack Coustard won't be made a fool of a second time. <laughs> Carry on with ideas like this, and one day you might get your own TV series. <laughs> harvest moon was high. A bunch of loose characters were harvesting swag. In other words, they were stealing. Evening all. Police dog rhubarb of the boneyard here. You know there are some characters who believe they have a right to own things that don't belong to them. Now tonight's story proves that those who steal things should keep their paws to themselves. For the past few nights, Custard has fallen in with some rather bad company. Namely, Morris Magpie, a rough old jailbird, and a dog-eared character called Bulldog Bertie. Rhubarb has recently noticed that his hoard of bones had been stolen. And last night, the birdhouse had been burgled. Several strings of precious peanuts were taken, together with a flight manual. Police dog Rhubarb and the Bluebird Flying Squad had a meeting and swore to track down the villains. So began the hunt in the garden. Groundwork is needed to track down criminals, and so by looking at the ground, we see... Paw 
prince, squeaked the birds. Precisely, my dear birds, exclaimed Rhubarb. I would say that those big prints belonged to a cat burglar. This piece of pink fur says yes. Could it be custard? Whistled the birds. And the other prince, Rhubarb went on, will be a fat dog and a heavy bird with a limp. Clever, decided the birds. How do you do it? Elementary, my dear birds. In the meantime, on the wrong side of the fence, Custard, Magpie and Bulldog were counting the swag and believed they'd got away with it. And so, as all baddies do, they decided to do just one more job and set off into the night. Rhubarb's plan was to stay up very late and surprise the burglars. And when the flying squad was hidden in the trees, Rhubarb dog-watched from the shed. On and on they waited, until suddenly the bungling burglars arrived. Rhubarb blew his dog whistle, and the gang was surrounded by the flying squad. Caught pink pawed, growled Rhubarb, as Custard was climbing up to the birdhouse. And the rest of the gang were rounded up by the flying squad. All the birds clapped as Rhubarb put the gang in irons. Oh, we've been clapped in irons, groaned Custard. Serve you right, said the birds. We're ashamed of you, said Rhubarb. <laughs> Rhubarb and the birds held a court. And Morris Magpie was told to beat it. And Bertie Bulldog was sent packing. Custard, said Rhubarb, crime doesn't pay. I know, grinned Custard. You're under arrest. Arrest? Me? Why? demanded Rhubarb. For trying to steal the show. <laughs> <laughs> Christmas Day at the doghouse, and Rhubarb looked out onto a clean, white world. Good heavens, muttered Rhubarb. What a cool you! It snowed, whatever that means. Now I'll have to go out and build a snow dog, and with all this preparation for the party, I'll never be ready in time. With that, Rhubarb went out and announced he was going to build a snow dog. Custard peeped over the fence and wished Rhubarb a Merry Christmas in a sniggling sort of way. And the birds jumped up and down on the roof with such excitement that they sent a whole pile of snow crashing down right on top of rhubarb. The garden animals erupted into a pantomime of giggles with birds sliding down twigs and bouncing on telephone wires. How's that for a finishing touch? shouted Custom. <sighs> Merry Christmas to you, shivered rhubarb at the very top of his b -b 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 bark. <laughs> squeaked the birds. A moving snow dog, how clever you are. <sighs> Righty-ho. Right, right then, grumped Rhubarb in a cold sort of way. If you're not careful, I won't invite any of you to my Christmas party. A Christmas party? Squeaked the birds. Wow, uh, we'll be there, we'll be good. Rhubarb took them at their word and said to be at the party at six o'clock. In the kitchen, Rhubarb set to work in a very busy way, preparing the finest Christmas feast as only he knew how. Mmm, Rhubarb's Christmas relish, he muttered as he poured his way through his cookery book. 
Ah, take seven pounds of the wobbliest jelly and two gallons of the sparkliest lemonade and mix them together in a very still bowl. Add 103 giant strawberries and bounce the mixture about. Then pour in the juice of 37 ice creams. Mix one second and taste. Ooh. Oh, 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 tasted rhubarb. It's still, it's still, oh, mm. oh, how clever you are. Oh, oh, mm. oh. When rhubarb had been tasting for three hours, the kitchen clock chimed six and the guests arrived. Rhubarb's knees turned to jelly when he realized he'd eaten all the feast all by himself. Uh, uh, just a mo, gurgled Rhubarb with his mouth still full of goodies. Uh, uh, um, Mary, uh, 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 Mary, uh, said Rhubarb. You've eaten the feast, squeaked the birds. You big cheat. And Rhubarb felt ashamed. Oh, uh, <laughs> so I have, he said in a surprised sort of way. Boo, said the birds. Ho, 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 said a big, deep voice, and everyone looked around. It's Father Christmas! Everyone shouted with delight. Merry Christmas, everyone! Merry Christmas! said Santa, and came in with a sack full of fat mince pies and orangey drinks and passed them round. Where's poor old Custard? said Rhubarb in a sad sort of way. He's missing everything. Here I am, said Custard, taking off his Santa disguise. Hooray! shouted everyone, and the party went on till midnight. Merry Christmas, everyone. M Merry Christmas. On a smooth night, when the moon was smiling in the sky and was talking with Hugh, who is an owl, Rhubarb was snoring as only he knows how. When a message was delivered by a dreamy courier pigeon called Betty. Excuse me, said Betty. Are you General Rhubarb, little big hat? Oh, I am, said Rhubarb in a general sort of way. Now, what can I do for you? I have a message from General Custard, sir, said Betty. General Custard needs help right now. Crow Indians flocking together at Rookery Nook. Bunga! barked Rhubarb. Sound the bungle. General Custard needs help right now. The bungler blew the bungle, and nothing happened. So nobody came. Don't panic, said Rhubarb, and galloped off with the bungler. Four hours later, after galloping in the general's direction, Rhubarb arrived at Rookery Nook. The bungler bungled, and the crows retreated as fast as their wings could carry them. Well done, said Custard, and the two generals shook paws. It's quiet, said Custard. Too quiet, said Rhubarb. Over the horizon on the other side of the hill, the crows were getting ready for a war party. Broken wing, the chief was having his feathers pruned, and his wife, Squawkalot, was flapping about because she wasn't ready. And when Crow's Feet, the witch doctor, had finished putting on his war paint, Broken Wing gave a speech. Crow Indians, he said. Later, we will have sport with um pink cat called General Custard and um green dog called General Rhubarb Little Big Hat. We'll hear em, scare em, said Crow's Feet. Let the war party commence. <laughs> And Broken Wing danced with Squawkalot, and the others joined in round the campfire. Sounds nasty, said Rhubarb. 
Next morning, quite late because they had been dancing all night, the crows appeared on the horizon. Now wait till you see the reds of their eyes, barked Rhubarb, as the crows bounced nearer and nearer. Rhubarb and Custard let fly with their secret weapon, Custard's pies. And the battle went on all day long. As the sun went down, there was one pie left. A Custard's last pie, said Rhubarb. And may I, sir? You may, said Custard. And Rhubarb threw it right at Broken Wing, who was arguing with his wife. <laughs> Thank you, General Little Big Hat. You've saved the day, said Custard. It was an honour, said Rhubarb, to have fought with Custard's last pie. Rhubarb opened a dreamy eye, and then the other. What a dream, smiled Rhubarb. What a hero you were. Good morning, General, he said to Custard, and strutted off down the garden. Just show me a crow, Rhubarb was thinking to himself, as six fat crows bounced onto the fence. Ah, uh, it's him you want, shouted Rhubarb, turning on his heels and pointing at Custard as he streaked back to the house. It's him you want, not me, not me. On a day that didn't feel like anything very much, other than any other day, Rhubarb glanced at his calendar, ripped last week off, ate it, and noticed that it was Thursday. By Jove, it's Thursday, gleamed Rhubarb. Thursday, the day of Thor, Viking God of Thunder. And suddenly Rhubarb knew it was going to be a great day. What a character Thor was, ranted Rhubarb. A bit like me, really. Tall, green, and handsome, with a fiery temper. Out in the garden, Rhubarb ran about and advertised that from now on, Thursdays would be Thor's days. And by thunder, they were going to be fun. What's that fool Rhubarb up to now? muttered Custard, and slid off the fence into a deep sleep. But I don't like thunder, squeaked Mouse. Well, don't worry, there won't be any, murmured Custard and Rhubarb stood in the smoking doorway, sending flashes of lightning about the garden, just for fun. I am Thor, boomed Rhubarb. God of Thunder! First days always was a Thor point with Rhubarb, cringed Custard. But by Jupiter, he's gone too far this time. And the birds and mouse scurried off and hid. Rhubarb thundered about the garden, flashing lightning about and generally making enough noise to waken the gods. What's all that noise? growled Woden from very high up at the top of the sky. I heard it too, said Mars, and Mrs. Odin stormed in and demanded to know who was making all the noise. It's Rhubarb said Mars, looking down at the garden. He thinks he's Thor. Well, I'll soon put a stop to that, said Mrs. Odin, and flashed a spell down and changed Rhubarb into a very funny shape. Custard almost split his sides with giggles when boom, said Mars, and Rhubarb was a giraffe. Gosh and golly, screamed the birds. What fun! And laughed so much they flew upside down. Buzz, said Woden, and Rhubarb was an elephant. 
some of the birds flew up to the very top of the sky to see Woden, Mars and Mrs Odin and asked for request time. Granted, said Mrs Odin. I'd like Rhubarb to be a plate of jelly, said the bluebird. So he was, and everyone wobbled him. I'd like him to be on wheels so we can ride him, shouted Custard from the garden. So Rhubarb was on wheels. <laughs> I'd like him to say he was sorry for frightening us all, said Mouse. And the real four arrived from Norway in a very angry mood. He made it thunder and lightning and double rain only on Rhubarb. Custard, the birds and Mouse thought this was wonderful. And Rhubarb ran about the garden, followed by a very angry black cloud. Every dog has his day, but first these are not yours, shouted Custard. And everyone laughed and laughed. were all over the garden one morning and Rhubarb was convinced it was an earthquake until he looked out and saw to his amazement that it was a gnu with tears. Oi, gnu, shouted Rhubarb in a brave sort of way. Why are you crying? I'm lost, sobbed the beast and blew his nose on a large red spotted hanky. I've never seen a gnu crying before shrugged Rhubarb. But on the other, Paul, I've never seen a gnu before either. You, uh, you are a gnu, are you not? inquired Rhubarb. No, sniffed the gnu. I'm a lion. Oh, said Rhubarb in a surprised sort of way. Would you like a marrowbone jelly? The lion took a jelly and told Rhubarb all about how sad he was about being lost from the circus. And by this time, the birds and custard had arrived and were listening to the lion's tale of woe. <laughs> Everyone tried to cheer Lion up, but it was no good. I know, snapped Rhubarb. Let's have a circus, the greatest show on earth that's bound to cheer him up. Custard scuttled over the fence, not wanting to be associated with yet another of Rhubarb's pea-brained ideas. All the birds were very excited and said that they thought it was a good idea. You agree with me? gulped Rhubarb and almost fainted. Well, yes, we agree to be the audience, twittled the birds, and fluttered about with excitement. And we agree to fly around in circles and plan out the circus ring. So be it. The show will go on, promised Rhubarb. <coughs> Lion was too sad to help and just sat and looked at the ground. So very reluctantly, Custard mumbled back over the fence and went off with Rhubarb up to the shed to help out. The birds had finished making the circus ring and were flapping about with glee and Lion was still looking at the ground when Custard, the ringmaster, announced that the fantastic rhubarb of the One Dog Circus Company would juggle for their entertainment, be fired from a cannon for their excitement, ride wild horses for their delight, Finally, performed breathtaking feats with his own four poles at a giddy altitude upon the high wire. I haven't enjoyed myself so much for years, said Lion. The birds howled with agreement. That very moment, the real circus came thundering by. Rhubarb's muffled shouts for assistance to help him down were completely drowned by the brassy noise of the big band and of cheers from the garden animals when Lion invited everyone to a real circus. 
Rhubarb was so peeved at being snubbed, he jumped up and down angrily, slipped into the net, and didn't know she was coming or going. Custard turned in his tracks at the sound of Rhubarb's high howling and decided to stay for the rest of the act. Ahoy, everyone! Never mind the real circus. This is where the live wires are, shouted Custard and laughed and laughed and laughed. Look, everyone, shouted Rabbit. It's raining cats and dogs. And the show went on and on. One sparkly day, in the middle of a cold spell, Rhubarb went out into the garden and noticed right away that his mouth was on fire. Rhubarb thought of nothing except the fact that he was the luckiest dog he knew and that if the door had accidentally splunked closed, he'd be smoking all over by now. Much later on, with all his courage piled up inside his ears, Rhubarb peeped his nose out. Puff, uttered Rhubarb. Puff! fluttered he, as he huffed and puffed great big lungfuls of smoky blue out into the frosty morning. It must be that coal I ate yesterday. Quite pleased now with his smoking mouth, Rhubarb ran down to the pond. Then stopping in his tracks, he almost fell over with amazement at the sight before his very eyes. First my smoking mouth, and now this, muttered Rhubarb. Well, I never. A duck with legs and feet, he said with a nip in the air. What a delightful duck, mused Rhubarb, and what pretty legs. And he dived his nose towards the water and crashed it into the ice with a thud that could be heard all over the garden. As angry as an alligator, Rhubarb demanded to know who had double glazed the pond in the night. And as he jumped up and down, he slipped and went spinning towards the centre of the pond. What fun, grinned Rhubarb. What jolly, jolly fun, he squealed. What new wonderments have you invented in your wisdom? What new games have you given to the world? Rhubarb rumbled on as he tied a couple of bones to his athlete's feet and announced to the world he'd invented... <laughs> golf! Good heavens, I think I've invented it too slippery, gulped Rhubarb. gaining confidence and humming the scraper's waltz. Rhubarb was as happy as the day. And he noticed that all the birds were squeaking the scraper's waltz. And Cowardy Custard, the big fat cat, was screeching the scraper's waltz. And all in all, the whole thing sounded beautiful. Rhubarb whirled into a frenzied fantasia. He had indeed invented golf. As the sun rose warmly into the morning sky, Rhubarb golfed on and the garden orchestra hummed and buzzed its way to the finale as Rhubarb spun round faster and faster. The sun smiled, the icicles melted and the double glazing creaked. Crunch! went the double glazing, and Pladon went rhubarb as he splashed into the water. <laughs> Custard broke the fence into pieces with an uncontrollable giggle, and the birds up the tree went wild with laughter, and rhubarb was wet. As rhubarb shook himself, 
and scuttled up to the house. He barked with fury at the garden animals and promised them that one day he would invent ice skating. Even the sun was too hot, and there wasn't enough breeze for a bee to fly. Rhubarb was panting along to the pond for a cool drink when he noticed there wasn't any water. What's happened to the water? asked Rhubarb in a thirsty sort of way. The sun drank it, squeaked the birds. But I was so thirsty, said the sun, looking sheepish. Greedy, growled Rhubarb. Couldn't you do something? asked the birds. Well, said Rhubarb, I'll have to think. And when he had thought for an hour and a half and had a headache, he announced that he would seek the source of the pond. The birds squeaked with delight because they knew he was mad, and Custard chuckled from behind the paw. It's a water we want, not source, quipped a crow. All water comes from a source of some sort, growled Rhubarb. And with that, he stormed off to get a walking stick and some sandwiches for the long journey. Swaggering out of the shed, Rhubarb set off to find the source of the pond, humming, Mud men and English dogs go out in the midday sun. Excuse me, said Rhubarb to a mole who was making a mountain out of a mouldy hill. Have you uh, seen the source of the pond? Oh, yes, said the mole. It's at the centre of the earth, and it's minded by a frog with a hat called Dr. Limestone, who sleeps all winter and makes sauce all summer. Follow me. Uh, are you sure this is the right way? Asked Rhubarb. And before Mole could answer, they were in a huge cave at the centre of the earth. Uh, you were right, said Rhubarb. But Mole had gone. Uh, uh, hum, uh, hummed Rhubarb. But there was nobody there. Cave? Oh, uh, Dr. Limestone, I presume? He echoed. Yes. I've uh, come to find the source of the pond because the sun drank the water. Goodness, is it summer? I must have overslept and the only sauce I have left is chocolate sauce. Oh, licked Rhubarb. My favourite. What you need is a water sauce, said the doctor. Oh, I'm sure everyone will be quite happy with the chocolate sauce, said Rhubarb, licking his lips. I found it, shouted Rhubarb at the top of his bark. I found the sauce. When Rhubarb had filled up the pond, he announced a diving display, and all the animals gathered round under the shade of the tree. on his way to rain in Spain, stopped in front of the sun for a while to see the fun, and the chocolate sauce set like concrete, and so did rhubarb. The birds laughed and squeaked so much they almost snapped the branches off the tree, and when a pigeon landed on rhubarb's head, Custard laughed till he couldn't stand up. One of these days, you lot will have to find another source of entertainment, mumbled rhubarb.
on a morning that was even more scratchy than the others, and even earlier than ever, Rhubarb was lying in the garden in a grizzling sort of way and ranting on about being woken up yet again by the thumping and scraping of birds beating around bushes and ants marching in lines and bees buzzing about. My, it was noisy. Will you be quiet? screamed Rhubarb. You're breaking the silence and it's far too early. Be quiet! He went on, but so did the noise. On and on and on. Right, ranted Rhubarb. If it's broken silence you want, it's broken silence you get. In fact, I'll smash it to smithereens, screamed Rhubarb and stormed off up to the shed. You know, did someone say something? Sighed Mole, who'd surfaced after looking at his map upside down again and causing another minor incident. But there wasn't a sound between there and the wood. My, it was quiet. As quiet as a cucumber. As the afternoon wore on to an end, the silence began to creak at the seams as Rhubarb knocked and nailed till well after tea time, building a silence breaker with an old racket, some bellows and lots of string. Custard popped his grin over the fence to see what was what, but apart from a couple of birds who'd just arrived at the tree, there wasn't a soul to be seen. Very quiet this evening, mused Custard to himself. Very quiet for the time of year. Still, makes a nice change. Be a pity to break it, sighed he, settling down on the fence for forty winks, just as the shed door almost flew off its hinges as Rhubarb burst out into the garden with his nasty noise machine and shattered the silence. <laughs> Oi! Turn that thing off! demanded Custard. You're breaking the silence! Turn it off! I know! It's my silence breaker! I've made it! Good, isn't it? He screamed as he trundled the machine all over the garden as it got louder and louder. What an inventive mind you have, Rhubarb thought to himself. Pardon? Oh, yes. Brilliant. I can hardly hear myself think, he thought on. After he'd been round the garden twice, Rhubarb sat down for a while to have a little rest. There, he grinned. Excellent. That's broken all the silence in the garden and must have disturbed everything else for at least a mile. Peace! roared a big black police dog. Beg pardon? grinned Rhubarb. Peace! That is what it's disturbed! The peace! Turn it off immediately! This is my world silence breaker, shouted Rhubarb, and pulled the stop handle, which wasn't very strong. Oh, it's broken, whimpered Rhubarb, as the machine set off round the garden completely out of control. screamed the police dog. There's only one thing that breaks, and that is the law! Rhubarb lived in a house with a very sunny garden with trees and bees and bone holes and things that sniffed good and things that bounced and he enjoyed the way things were. For most of his life, Rhubarb had been eating chairs and shoes and holes in carpets and even the trees. But try as he might, he couldn't eat the rubber band. 
All the birds in the garden ate rubber bands. But every time Rhubarb went out to ask them how they found them, they would just jump into the sky and float about. As Rhubarb watched from behind the curtains up at the house, a big fat crow with a big yellow spike plucked a big fat rubber band right out of the ground. Not three paws from where he was hiding. They're spikes, grinned Rhubarb. They stick their spikes into the ground and pull out the rubber bands. Now why didn't you think of that? Oh, because you haven't got a spike. The next thing to being a bird, Rhubarb mumbled on in a knowing sort of way, is being able to float about in the sky. And to find out how they do that, you'll have to get very close to one indeed. Now what gets close to birds? Six and a half weary hours later, still disguised as a huge piece of bread, the birds began to bounce very close to him. This is it, chuckled Rhubarb. My crummy plan is working. And he lay still as still can be. Aha! So that's how they bounce. This is fantastic. How clever you are. As all the birds bounced around, Rhubarb was able to see that they had very thin, flat arms and that they would flap them with fury whenever they wanted to jump into the sky and float about. Rhubarb shook off his disguise as he decided the whole idea of being a piece of bread had gone a bit stale. Oh, you're so funny, he said to himself as all the birds bounced up into the tree. Light shone from the only window in the shed as Rhubarb was working on Mark I of a machine on which he'd pinned all his hopes of ever getting at the rubber bands. As the sun came up over the conker tree, the oddest, doggiest character stood in the shed doorway, and then very slowly, he trundled out into the center of the lawn. All the early birds came into the garden and sat in Rhubarb's tree and squeaked with excitement at the new strange sight. As Rhubarb reached the shade, he stood for a while, as all great dogs do before embarking up the wrong tree. Climbing gingerly into the seat of the swing, Rhubarb checked all his equipment. Flaps, spike, springs, all okay. Quietly at first, Rhubarb started to make the noise of the holiday jets that fly over the garden on sunny days, the sound he'd perfected during the night. As the sound got louder, he gently lifted his legs off the ground. Springs up! We'll have lift off! shouted Rhubarb in a muffled tone from under his huge yellow spike. This is a great step for dog kind. And as the wind whistled past his eyes and his little arms flapped with fury, Rhubarb felt himself being lifted higher and higher into the world beyond the four paws of dog. Rhubarb was so excited that he was the first dog ever to enter into flight that he forgot to flap his cardboard wings. And so with the piercing scream of a jet changing into the screaming pierce of a dog, he plunged towards the garden and his big yellow spike plonked into the green turf and into rubber band land. An hour later, poor Rhubarb was still furious as all the birds for miles about came bouncing along on their springs. And even Custard, the big fat cat from next door, came to laugh. Rhubarb was stuck. Birds have beaks and Rhubarb had a spike. And a beak is a beak and a spike is a spike. On a very cosy morning, Rhubarb had been reading a book for three hours and was just about to read the fifth word when a roly-poly piece of wallpaper slid down the wall and covered him completely. You can't depend on anything these days, 
mumbled rhubarb in a muffled sort of way. This wallpaper has only been up for a hundred years, he went on, as he ripped and shredded his way out. And now I'll have to redecorate, just as I was getting to a good word in my book. Hmm, what sort of style shall I have? Thought rhubarb. Art New Vogue might be nice. Hmm, well, very graphic, but a bit fiddly. What about a nice bone pattern? Uh, better not. I'll eat myself out of house and home. I know. Kaleidoscopic. Oh, ow! What are you trying to do to yourself? Screamed Rhubarb as the idea buzzed in one ear and out of the other. A cosy cottage. No, too boring. Elegance and grandeur is what you deserve. It would be fitting to your character. Yes. Wood panelling and expensive leather chairs, rather like those at the Kennel Club. Rhubarb agreed with himself entirely and went out to tell everyone. Attention, please, everyone! shouted Rhubarb, and great scurrying noises could be heard in the garden as all the animals made a rush for the garden gate. Not another plan! cringed Custard. As everyone crushed at the gate, Rhubarb went on. Anyone who helps me decorate my house will get free cream cakes. And with that, all the animals turned round and bounded up to the house. All day long, the animals busied themselves making glue and slipping in it. And hanging wallpaper and ripping it. painting doors and leaning on them. Birds of a feather stick together. Chortled rhubarb, falling from a ladder. When the house was finished, everyone stood back and gawked at the mess. Hideous, snapped rhubarb. Hideous, it's just not me. It's just not my style. Let's paint it all white. <laughs> oh, that'll take all night. Grumble, everyone. Free cakes, Rhubarb reminded them. Oh, all right, moaned the birds. Custard was having trouble stirring a pot of very stiff white paint when Rhubarb came back from spending half an hour up at the shed. Look out, Custard. Stand back, everyone. I'll mix the paint with my new paint mixer invention. With that, Rhubarb dunked his electric paint mixing invention into the paint, switched it on, and white paint spluttered and spurted out of the can covered the whole house. Hooray! shouted the birds. How clever you are! Now we don't have to paint the house. No, but now we'll have to paint ourselves the right colour, chuckled Rhubarb. Ah, uh, won't that be, uh, <laughs> gilding the lily? quipped Custard. And Rhubarb pushed him into a big pot of pink paint. And everyone else laughed and ate free cream cakes. rummaging noises and muttering and mumbling noises up at the shed. There was spring in the air and as usual there was custard catnapping on the fence. The birds were down at the pond wetting their whistles and all in all it was a very nice day until spring sprung from the shed. Seeds! grinned Rhubarb. Seeds for sowing! he beamed. Yes, a few flowers here and there will make a world of difference to this garden, he rambled on. Sow the wind and reap the whirlwind, sighed Custard, and the birds twittered and nodded with agreement. 
Nothing much happened for the rest of the morning, and the day wore on until huffing and puffing noises could be heard on the other side of the thicket as Rhubarb turned the earth and mopped his brow. Ah, one seed every now and then, read Rhubarb from the side of the packet and planted the seeds step by step. One now and one then, he went on, all over the garden. And when he'd finished, he stepped back and dreamed of summer. All we do now is wait, shouted Rhubarb in a weary sort of way to the garden animals. Wait for a garden full of beautiful colour. The moon came up over Custard's fence and beamed down onto the garden, where snores were busy buzzing about and everyone was asleep, when creaking and squeaking noises came out of the ground, followed by little green buds. When it was time, Rhubarb's noisy alarm clock wound itself up and rung its bell as loud as bells can be. Oh, what? Oh, morning already, chirped Rhubarb. Oh, well, let's see what the day is all about, he went on. It's a dream. That clock will have to go, snorted Rhubarb, glaring out into a deep green jungle. Oh, I'm still asleep. That's what I am, asleep. And that's a big, fat, dreamy jungle. Jungle? snorted Rhubarb and went out to sea. All the birds were sniggling and giggling and chortling at Rhubarb when one of them overheard him saying something about an idea. Idea? Rhubarb? squeaked the birds and went off in a flap. reached Rhubarb as he swung out of the shed, leapt up a tree and went ranting off through the jungle as fast as his rope could carry him. I'm a ferocious gorilla, said a big shape in a voice Rhubarb recognised immediately. OK, tough guy, you're no gorilla, said Rhubarb in a brave sort of way and pulled the gorilla mask off. Oh, I know I'm no gorilla, sighed Custard. But you're no gardener either. M m m m maybe I'm not, squeaked Rhubarb. However, it, it, it would appear that I, I, I'm quite good at making j j j jungles. One bright morning, when it was summer, there wasn't much happening in Rhubarb's garden, except Rhubarb marching up and down the lawn, learning out loud. Rhubarb had joined the Scouts, and although he said he would stay in the Scouts forever, well, everyone knew it was just a flash in the billy can. Rule two, promise to help other people at all times, muttered Rhubarb as he walked past the tree, tripped over someone's pink leg and fell, head over woggle, into a sharp rose bush. Rule five, a scout is courteous, smirked Custard, picking up Rhubarb's scout book. Oh, uh, I'm sorry, Custard, said Rhubarb with a smile. Is your leg all right? Would you like to join the Scouts? Custard threw the book at Rhubarb and told him to go and jump in the pond. Oh, 
Oh dear, rule six, he whimpered. A scout obeys orders. Scouting could be fun, chuckled Custard. Just remember the rules, old chap. Rhubarb was sitting in the pond, all wet, and not at all amused. Rule 11, he growled. Scouts are not to be laughed at. Custard took not the slightest bit of notice of Rhubarb's anger, but simply quoted Rule 8. A scout whistles and smiles under all difficulties. Then went on to remind Rhubarb of Rule 6 to obey. Rhubarb was furious but did just manage to peep a squeaky little whistle whilst he walked from the pond. Before Custard could bend the rules any more, Brown Owl flew into the garden with her pack of birdies and was indeed shocked at what she saw. You too should set an example to these young birdies and stop this silly fooling, hooted Brown Owl. Rule three, a scout must be useful. Now show the birdies how to do knots. Rhubarb was delighted and started off with a reef knot. And the birdies thought that was marvellous and dibbed and dobbed all around him. So Rhubarb told them all about half hitches and granny knots and timber hitches. Custard wasn't in the slightest bit interested and kept making rude remarks about grannies. The next knot barked rhubarb in a growling sort of way, is a rhubarb hitch, which when tied will never come undone. Take two pieces of rope, a brown piece and a pink piece, and tie them together like this. Then throw the loose end of the brown rope over the branch, pull it, and the pink piece will follow. The pink piece followed, and so did Custard. A swift half hitch will secure Bean Rhubarb. There's a hitch with everything you do, Rhubarb, snorted Custard. Yes, and thereby hangs a tail, chuckled Rhubarb in a winning sort of way. One very grey day is, I suppose, a bit like being fed up. Being fed up, agreed Rhubarb, as he sat looking at himself in the water bowl, is a bit like being bored. Ah oh well, what's on in the garden? Hummed he, as he watched the silvery rain sliding down and the soggy birds blobbing about in the wet. Shudder, shudder. How glad I am to be in here being bored and not being wet. But on the other pole, what do bored beings do to get unbored? Rhubarb asked himself. What about staring at television for an hour or so? Well, let's see what's on. Oh, just as I thought, the dog with the bones. I wonder how she got that test card job. I'd have eaten the bones by now. Or at least juggle with them. That's it. A show. I've put on a show for the soggy birds. There's going to be a show today. The rhubarb show. See the show in ten minutes. Roll up, roll up. Tell your friends. All are welcome. See the rhubarb show today. Shouted rhubarb. In the garden, the birds gathered with excitement. Custard rolled up with a big fat spotted umbrella. On the lounge window, there was a notice. 
Royal Co Opera House, Rhubarb Show, at three o'clock today. The audience bounced and shouted because it was going to be a nice day after all. Dead on the stroke of three o'clock, the rain stopped and bright yellow sunbeams poured down onto the stage and onto Rhubarb, clown of clowns. I say, I say, I say, shouted Rhubarb. When is a bird not a bird? When it's got nothing to do and it's a board. Oh, 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 oh. Just like now, croaked a big fat crow. The audience hummed with disagreement. But Rhubarb went on with the show. I once met a dog who had no nose, so how did he smell? Yeah, we know, awful. Just like your act, screeched Custer. Get off! shouted the birds. Wait, wait, shouted Rhubarb in a disguised voice from behind the curtains. Be patient, my friends, and you will be rewarded. In one minute, you will be privileged to hear Rhubarb, premier of pianists for the first time in this garden, playing Rhubarb's fifth symptom on a piano. As the curtain rose on stage two, the audience settled once again, and Rhubarb's slim pianist claws danced quickly over the keys. Fantastic! shouted the birds. Bravo! said the crow. With such wild encouragement, Rhubarb got carried away completely. What a show! screamed Custard. How do you do it? Everyone shouted. That's show business, grinned Rhubarb. That's show business. One briskly morning, just after the sun got out of bed and the wind had wound the clouds up and sent them floating across the sky, Rhubarb crawled out of bed, peeped out of the window and began doing his exercises, barking on the spot, followed by vigorous tail wagging and ending up flexing his poor old feet. He tried exercising his brain, but that was bone idle. Get up, you lazy bunch! Barked Rhubarb from the top of the house. I've decided we're all out of shape! Snapped he. <coughs> you might be a funny shape, but we're not! Smiled Custard as he slid off the fence into a deep sleep. Go away, Rhubarb! twittered the birds, and Mrs. Hedgehog rolled off in a ball and hid under a pile of leaves. Everyone thought they'd seen the last of Rhubarb and snoozled on until the sound of deep growling exercises came thundering from the shed and shattered the snoring slumbers. <coughs> Rhubarb, the sports dog, stood in the shed doorway. Oh, no, groaned everyone. He's at it again. Roll up, roll up, grinned Rhubarb. Sports day today, sports day today, prizes for all. And he swaggered out, making an exhibition of himself. Oh, well, let's win the prizes and get the whole thing over as quickly as possible, agreed everyone. In the garden, there were long jumps over sand. and high jumps over sticks and running over a mile.
In the afternoon, there was excitement over plate throwing. <laughs> laughing over trampolining. and anger over Rhubarb, who was cheating his way to all the prizes. When the birds twigged what was happening, Custard fixed the high jump and poured Treacle into the long jump. Rhubarb fell right into the trap. He was catapulted from the high jump, bounced from the trampoline, and dunked into the treacle. What sportsmanship! Everyone shouted. What style! They went on and laughed and laughed. He who laughed 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 longest. Custard cat called and was tickled pink. And the others agreed. Rhubarb took not the slightest bit of notice, but just swam about eating the treacle. That's not fair, grumped everyone. He's enjoying his punishment. Don't be upset, grinned Rhubarb. Come on in, the treacle's lovely. So they all made the best of a sticky situation. It was rather a flat day on Monday, with flat clouds floating in a flat sky and flat birds sitting in flat trees, singing flat songs. Rhubarb was feeling a bit flat too and was kicking his heels when he noticed something which gave him an idea. <laughs> now, that would fill the day in very nicely, said Rhubarb, as he watched Custard hop-bobbing on the other side of the fence. Yes, a puppet show. I'll make some puppets and write a play, beamed Rhubarb, and planned the whole spectacular as he rambled his way up to the shed without telling a soul. Jenny Wren happened to be perched on a bough, listening to the flat day go by, when Rhubarb trundled past. Jenny saw the whole plan and fluttered off to tell the others. Jim Lads! All that morning, there were wisps of theatrical rehearsals wafting from the shed as Rhubarb made his puppets, wrote the play and perused his lines. Tragedy, drama, comic opera, whatever it was, it was bound to be a curtain raiser. <laughs> Aha! chortled Rhubarb as he swept out of the shed. Then trundled off to find an audience, only to be met by a sea of faces. Well, I'm stage truck murmured Rhubarb. A full house! With that, Rhubarb went behind a special bit of fence he'd made and began. With great knowledge, together with great effort, and me, I have writ for you an excellent new play which is to be performed for you by a cast of cut-out characters manipulated by my own fair paws and their lines reported to you by my own fair bark, announced Rhubarb, and his audience sat and waited with great expectations. Not a groan nor a peep from them, noted Rhubarb. Ah, oh, well, on with the show then, eh? What? There's a special attraction. The show will be performed entirely in original ventriloquism, as spoken in Ventnor. Good morning. The play opened. Good morning to Goo. Would you like a cup of coffee? No, thank you, Gary Kutch. I'd rather have a bottle of gear. Rhubarb thought the play was very, very funny and had hysterics. But the audience never uttered a squeak and Rhubarb wondered why. 
Oi, you lot, this is a very funny play, don't you know? So why aren't you laughing, eh? demanded Rhubarb. And why aren't you laughing, Leddy? He went on to Custard and poked him with his paw. Cardboard cutouts? screamed Rhubarb. Oh, cardboard cutouts? He ranted as he kicked everyone over. <laughs> Sniggling and smirking noises were coming from the thicket, and so Rhubarb investigated. <laughs> oh, so that's where you all are, growled Rhubarb. Why all the cardboard cutouts? he demanded. Better that the card gets bored, dear boy, rather than us, tittered Custard with a smirk. Sometimes words fail me, ranted Little Bob. Yeah, especially when you write plays, <laughs> chuckled Custard. That's the best joke I've heard all day, said Rabbit, and Rhubarb was laughed off the stage. suppose I must be what's called a lucky dog, thought Rhubarb one very fine day as he sat in the lap of luxury eating fresh marylebone jellies. Custard was draped over the fence, dreaming of a fishing holiday. Ah yes, it certainly was a dog's life. Just as Rhubarb was about to tuck into another marylebone jelly, Tattered old gentleman of the road wandered into the garden and told Rhubarb of how he was down on his luck. Custard opened an eye and moved upwind. My dear chap, said Rhubarb after listening to the story, you must stay to dinner. What's your name? Bert, barked the tramp. I once knew a hummingbird that smelt like that, muttered Custard. But after munching both his own dinner and Rhubarb's, Bert happened to mention a friend of his who was also rather down on his luck and asked Rhubarb if he could invite his friend Edward to supper. Certainly, my dear chap, chirped Rhubarb. And with that, Bert went off to find his chum whilst Rhubarb tied it up. Edward, a well-spoken fellow who had been staying in rooms at Battersea, had a dear old friend called Simon who knew a charming lady from the Isle of Dogs. All in all, there was quite a party, which went on till well past Rhubarb's bedtime. <sighs> and well past Rhubarb's stock of bones. the rhododendrons, Rhubarb's guests decided to retire to bed, so they wandered off into the house and left poor old Rhubarb out in the cold. Custard, being a cool cat, preferred to sleep out at night and was just settling down when he noticed Rhubarb pawing over the ground in a very angry mood. Locked out of my own house by a bunch of vagabonds, lamented Rhubarb. After all I did for them, snivelled he. Custard said he would help get them out by playing his violin. But Rhubarb begged him to stop. What about haunting them out? said Custard. Brilliant! snapped Rhubarb, and they both ran up to the shed for some haunting sheets. Just after midnight, Rhubarb and Custard, two of the scariest spooks ever, fumbled out of the shed and floated off to the house. Rhubarb got the giggles and asked Custard if he was from a catacomb, 
but Custard was trying to be serious. Oh, sorry I spook, spluttered Rhubarb. The tramps were all snoring as the spooks tip-pawed up the stairs and began haunting the house. Bert woke up first and let out a scream which set the whole gang trembling and tumbling out of the house and off into the night. Rhubarb thanked Custard for his help and went his weary way to bed and sank into a deep sleep. Until a terrible wailing and clanking of chains woke him and he scrambled off down the garden shouting for Custard, who was up at the house having a whale of a time. nobody is quite sure about, Rhubarb was shaken, not stirred from his slumbers, by the nerve-shattering sound of his silly old alarm clock ringing at the top of its bone. The day hasn't even arrived yet, snapped Rhubarb as he pressed his nose to the window and blinked at the blank outside. Your big hand doesn't know what your little hand's doing, snarled Rhubarb to the clock. I sometimes wonder what makes you tick. Custard was catnapping on the fence and took no heed of the clock. But the birds were all up and about and hopping mad because there was no sky to float about him. Rhubarb was trying to get back to sleep, but with all the birds making such a noise, it was completely impossible. What those birds need is a good barking to, grizzled Rhubarb as he stormed out of the house and demanded to know what all the noise was about, even before the day had arrived. The day's here, all right, squeaked the birds. It's just not been coloured in, and we can't take off before a day's been coloured in. Even old Rookie won't take off. <laughs> Rhubarb phoned the weathercock and made certain inquiries as to why the day hadn't been coloured in. Oh, but it was coloured in, crowed the weathercock. I've got the dispatch note here. Tuesday, sky, white clouds on bright blue background, grass, green, sun, yellow. It was sent off at 6.45, but got covered in fog. <laughs> Could you get some wind? Inquired Rhubarb in a clever sort of way. I'll try. a gentle breeze from the Orient, said East Wind. Good for waving silk flags, but not for moving thick fog. Sorry. <coughs> South Wind wasn't interested either. He just sauntered by and whistled something about having to blow at a jazz concert. The wild West Wind was busy blowing tumbleweed over the prairie. North Wind would be best, said the weathercock. He wasn't at home, but I did leave a message. Right, said Rhubarb groped his way up to the shed and proclaimed that he would get rid of the fog. Now what could that mean? groaned the birds. A machine, shouted Rhubarb. The Rhubarb patented fog collecting machine. Well, we may as well forget today, croaked Rookie. Just before the birds were bored, the shed door opened and Rhubarb pulled and heaved his fog winding machine into the garden and started it up. Great clanking noises filled the air as yards of fog were sucked into the machine, together with chairs and pictures and cups and saucers, which were whisked out of the house as the machine went berserk and finally blew up. 
north wind blew in and cleared the air so everyone could see. Good, good, good morning, said the north wind. Well, what's all this mess then, eh? I haven't the foggiest idea, said Custard. Recently, Rhubarb was sitting in the garden, thinking how nice it was not having custard grinning over the fence for once, and the birds scratching noises into the summer air with their silly beaks, and how nice it was having nothing happening, apart from wondering what would happen next, when it did. <coughs> oh, cringed Rhubarb. <coughs> One minute all's well, and the very next minute all's... <coughs> there it is again. <coughs> what are you rambling on about now? inquired Custard, without even bothering to look over the fence. Earthquakes, <coughs> announced Rhubarb. That's what I'm rambling about. Earthquakes, and lots of them. <coughs> Whatever you do, don't panic, <coughs> shouted Rhubarb, as he careered round the garden, warning everyone about the dangers of earthquakes. And in the event of one, the dangers of wearing damp socks. <coughs> Whatever that meant. <coughs> Custard dragged himself out of a snoozle and heaved a sigh over the fence. Ah, oh, now what's the matter? He inquired. Earthquakes! Screamed Rhubarb. I've told you once, earthquakes, don't you see? <gasps> Maybe the end of the world! <gasps> Custard sank from sight. And the moon rose over the fence as Rhubarb worked on into the night, making an earthquake-proof machine, in which he planned to sit safely all the next day. When it got light, the sun beamed over the fence, quickly followed by Custard, looking for the first laugh of the day. Ahoy, in there! shouted Custard. Come out, we know you're in there! With all the noise going on, the birds bounced into the garden and squeaked with delight when Custard told them to get ready for the biggest laugh of their lives. Ah, oh, come on, Rhubarb, let us in on a joke, said Custard. You laugh on the other side of your beaks when the earthquake comes, <gasps> said a voice, echoing up from the far end of the garden. As everyone looked round, they saw a strange object dangling from the conquer tree. What on earth could it be? Everyone asked. Is it from space? queried Custard. Then it's on a string, squeaked the birds. This is my patented earthquake survival machine, echoed a hollow <coughs> voice. It is from space, quivered the birds, getting in a flap. That is rhubarb, chortled Custard, pointing to a window in the machine. <coughs> well, 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 if it's not the old dog himself sitting in a dustbin swinging from an earthquake-proof tree, swaggered Custard and tapped the dustbin hard enough to give poor old rhubarb a headache for a fortnight. <laughs> then he burst into a chuckle followed closely by twittering birds, a rabbit in raptures, and the howlings of hedgehogs, until the whole garden was in uproar at rhubarb trapped in a dustbin. That's quite proof, <laughs> scoffed Custard. <coughs> said a bird. <coughs> said someone else, as everyone caught hiccups until the very earth trembled. See? Shouted rhubarb from his machine. He wouldn't listen to me. <coughs>
Whilst pawing the bookshelves one peckish morning, Rhubarb was looking for something to eat. He'd tried War and Peace, but found it heavy going and a bit binding. What about the arts? Now there's a novel idea, muttered Rhubarb. Apples. Hmm. Mm. Mm. Pity to eat those. What about a play? There's a thought. How about a nice page or two of Hamlet and Eggs by Bacon and end with a nice piece of cheese? This looks interesting. Milton. Hmm. Hmm. It's stale. How to make a science laboratory in your cellar by a bat. With that, Rhubarb took the heavy book and scuttled off down the cellar. <coughs> Custard and the birds just looked at each other and shrugged big, deep shrugs. Down in the cellar, Rhubarb was fixing up a science laboratory. There were crocodiles on strings and toads with warts and simmering sorcerer's pans. How to make lemonade extra fizzy was the first experiment in the book, so Rhubarb sat down for a spell. When the lemonade was ready, Rhubarb ran up to the garden to show everyone. The birds were highly amused and Rhubarb was amazed until Custard pointed out that the bubbles were going down instead of up. Well, we all have our bad days, barked Rhubarb. Some of us more than others, grinned Custard. After altering the lemonade formula, Rhubarb took a large gulp, then another, then another. <laughs> this is it. Extra bubbly lemonade, he told himself. What a scientist you are. Just a minute. Who are you? Asked Rhubarb. I'm you, said the mirror. Your new bubble formula has made us tall and handsome. You're right, said Rhubarb, and drank another huge glassful. What a handsome dog we are. As the night went by, the birds noticed a strange figure slipping out of the house. Who could it be? Nay, what could it be? It, 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 it's dropped something, stuttered the birds. Shh, said Custard, and nipped over and picked up a bottle. Rhubarb's extra fizzy lemonade makes me tall and handsome, it said on the label. So it's Rhubarb, twittered everyone excitedly. Let's follow him. The tall, majestic figure swept through the gates of the mansion and disappeared inside. What was happening? Sound travels at night because it's cheaper. So it didn't take long before the beautiful singing could be heard from the rose tennis where Rhubarb was serenading the beautiful princess. Oh, who would have thought it? muttered Custard. Rhubarb sang on and the birds and Custard formed a chorus and the princess fell in love. Well, only until Rhubarb fell out of tune, that is. The more the effect of the lemonade mixture wore off, the more Rhubarb's voice went off too. Custard threw the bottle over to Rhubarb, but it crashed to the floor, and Rhubarb's voice shattered along with the bottle. Custard and the birds were very upset until the princess stood up and said, Oh, Rhubarb, what a wonderful disguise! And kissed him on the cheek. Why don't you all stay to dinner? said the princess. We've got roast cookery book, followed by chocolate-covered encyclopedia. They are home-printed. <laughs> You can't beat a good book, munched Rhubarb. after the chimes, and Grandfather Clock couldn't hold his big hand up any longer, Rhubarb was sitting in his kitchen, eating his morning newspaper, when there was a clatter at the front door as a huge brown paper parcel was squeezed through the letterbox and landed with a groan on the hall floor. Could this be the great day? wondered Rhubarb breathlessly as he wandered into the hall and gazed at the plump brown parcel lying at his paws. 
It's arrived! It's arrived! It's arrived! Twittered Rhubarb as he led himself a dance around the house in a very excited way and skipped out into the garden to tell everyone the good news. It's arrived! It's arrived! He announced at the very top of his bark. Custard glanced into the garden. What on earth is that? inquired he in such an uninterested way as only he knew how. This, said Rhubarb in a very excited way, as everyone gathered round for a close look, is my do-it-yourself bagpipe set. With that, there was a scurrying and hurrying and scattering for the next ten minutes until Rhubarb was completely alone, bar the bagpipes. Right then, I'll make the whole caboodle myself without any help at all nodded Rhubarb to the empty garden. I thought you said it was a bagpipe kit, echoed Custard from the safe side of the fence. Well, it is, snapped Rhubarb. And not only is it a bagpipe kit, it's a famous Caboodles of Glasgow bagpipe kit, so there! All the rest of that afternoon, Custard lay on his back, watching the clouds going by, and the birds larking about and listening to Rhubarb gluing the bagpipes together and reading the notes. When Rhubarb had finished putting the final touches to the instrument, he turned the page in the instruction book, memorized a tune, ate the book, and announced to the world that there would be a bagpipe bonanza on the lawn at four o'clock. Sure enough, there was. Rhubarb was huffing and puffing the pipes and there was great excitement in the garden when an underdog from Caboodles arrived with yet another brown paper parcel even bigger than the first and addressed to Custard the cat. All the birds flapped about as Custard strolled over in a curious sort of way and untied the parcel there and then. Dear Custard, said the words in a note just inside the box, everyone who purchases a Caboodles famous bagpipe kit is entitled to a free Caboodles violin for his next door neighbor. Oh, wonderful! That's me! Thank you, Rhubarb, beamed Custard. What a wonderful fiddle! said he, and played to the gallery for more than an hour. <laughs> oh, gracious me, murmured Rhubarb. I think I've got more than I bargained for here. You take the high road, and I'll take the low road, cackled Custard. Which way? shrugged Rhubarb. Any way you like, all the world's a stage, laddie, drawled Custard in a dreadful Scottish accent. which wasn't very much different to any other day in a dog's diary, Rhubarb happened to be rummaging about in the shed, looking for something better to do, when he came upon a camera in a box. Well, I never, grinned Rhubarb. A box camera and some film and a book full of words explaining how to make a film. We're going to make a film, shouted Rhubarb from the shed doorway. Casting session in ten minutes and he hung a notice on the shed saying, Hollybush Studios. All the birds bounced up and formed a queue and with great excitement wondered who the star would be, as if they didn't know already. Custard was catnapping on the fence and decided to leave it that way for the moment. After keeping everyone waiting for more than 10 minutes, because that's what it said in the book, 
Rhubarb, the director, swirled from the shed and handpicked the extras. You, you, and you. Then looked about for a co-star. Custard was being difficult to get. So Rhubarb offered him the earth and he signed a ten minute contract there and then. The film was to be called The Train. And when the sun was behind everyone, they rolled the cameras right away. Rhubarb starred in the film and directed it. And when it was finished, he announced that the premiere would be after dark by the big tree. When it was night, the sun had to go and was very upset. But Rhubarb promised to take the film to Australia one night and show it there. So that was okay. The garden animals gathered under the big tree and Rhubarb set the film going. As it was a very old book Rhubarb had found, it was a very old film they made. And as Rhubarb could neither read nor write properly, it was a silent film. were up the tree screeching with laughter. You'll never work for Hollywood Studios again, howled Rhubarb. And neither will I, mumbled Custard as he tiptoed over the face. Rhubarb was so angry that he ranted and raved, just as all great directors do. Don't ring us, we'll ring you, he bellowed as he went white with rage. <laughs> Too thick to walk through. I've never known such a thick day. Rhubarb ran into the wind and was then thrown back up to the house. What a rubbery day! There wasn't a soul in the garden, not a squeak nor a peep from anyone. Just Rhubarb springing back and forth and the wind howling. As Rhubarb was springing back up to the house, he reached out and caught hold of this tree and held on with all his might. Oh, oh dear, panted Rhubarb in a breathless sort of way. The day is slipping all one way and breaking the leaves off the tree. If only I could stop the day from slipping, I could save the leaves. Uh, but when a day starts to slip, there's nothing anyone can do. When the sun went down and the wind went, Rhubarb stood wobbling on the lawn with his fur stretched as long as string. Now, what sort of a day would do a thing like that, grumbled Rhubarb, falling into his bed, dog-tired and feeling very ropey. Next morning, Rhubarb woke up and carefully opened the door. 
went out into the garden to find that the new day wasn't at all thick or even slipping. Well, blow me down. No, 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 that's not what I mean. Screamed Rhubarb. <laughs> Deary me is what I really mean. Who? he said, as he looked about and saw that there was only one leaf on the tree. Even the leaves have slipped off the tree, said Rhubarb. And with that, he clipped out his claws and bounced about the garden, collecting up leaves and piling them by the tree. I'm going to mend the tree, shouted Rhubarb. And all the birds screeched with laughter. Custard leapt up onto the fence and grinned at Rhubarb's tree-mending feet, all clogged up with leaves. As soon as Rhubarb had finished piling up all the leaves, he bounded off up to the shed to get some glue and a ladder. When a gust of very wiggly wind blew into the garden and scattered Rhubarb's leaves all about. <laughs> the birds spun round and round in the sky and custard somersaulted and autumn sorted all along the fence and Rhubarb shouted at the top of his bark but nobody could hear him as the wind blew all the leaves and Rhubarb's voice far away up into the sky. As Rhubarb stormed back up to the house, speechless and in a very bad mood, Custard was caught up in a whirl of wind and went spinning up and down the top of the fence, screeching and screaming. This is one catastrophe I wouldn't miss for all the bones in a dinosaur, squealed Rhubarb as he found his voice and shouted above the howls of Custard and the wind. It's an ill wind that blows no good, and Custards are good for nothing. It was a fine summer evening and Rhubarb had just finished Tiffin and was reflecting on some stories he'd once heard about the grand old days when he saw the garden animals lounging about reading comics. Ah, oh, romance, fine summer evening scented with honeysuckle and filled with the sound of waltz music, gone forever, sighed Rhubarb. Good evening, Raymond Foxtrot smiled said the owner of the voice. Rhubarb, said Rhubarb. Custard peeped over his comic, but wasn't really interested in the fox. I'm looking for dancing couples, said Raymond. There's to be a grand ball on Saturday, and the finest dancers will win a fishing holiday. With that, Custard's ears pricked up, his eyes whirled round, and he tangoed towards the fox. Fishing already. <laughs> Good evening, sir, said Custard in a crawly sort of way. I did I hear you say fishing holiday? Indeed you did, sir. Uh, oh, uh, oh, uh, oh, uh, oh, uh, oh, fish, uh, awful things. No, not interested, said Custard. The fox thanked Rhubarb for his interest and said he hoped he'd meet him at the ball. Uh, uh hum, said Custard. I'm uh, not really interested in the ball myself, but I could show you a dance routine that's bound to win. Custard spent all the next morning teaching Rhubarb the new dance. And when Rhubarb had finally mastered the steps, it looked the most graceless, lumbering dance ever. However, Rhubarb was convinced he'd win. 
he thanked Custard and dashed off to ask Poodle Princess if she'd accompany him to the Grand Ball. Meanwhile, back in the alley, the sneaky Custard was skipping off to see his girlfriend, Moggy Malone. Wow, Moggy, my dear. The fishing holiday is as good as ours. Smoked Custard. <laughs> when the gala night arrived, all the animals gathered up at the clearing on Fox's Dale. Moon was up so everyone could see. It was a lovely evening. Each dance team was given a number. And when it was their turn, Raymond Foxtrot Smythe called them to the floor, team by team. Custard and Moggy Malone stole the very hearts of the judges as they whirled about the floor as though in a cloud. And when they finished, everyone clapped. Number 25, called Raymond. Rhubarb and Princess began their strange, clackety dance. Custard nudged Moggy, winked, and just knew they'd won. But after a few of Rhubarb's steps, the audience began to like the strange dance and started to join in. What fun it was! And what fun it was when Raymond awarded 47 points to Rhubarb and Princess and announced them outright winners. Blighters! Cringed Custard and went green with envy. Rhubarb was in the pink, Moggy Malone stormed out, and Princess accepted the winning prize tickets. I thought there was something fishy about the whole thing, she said, and everyone danced till dawn. was chuntering about down the garden one day, with nothing much on his mind, as usual. When the sun came out and was busy brightening up the day, as Rhubarb noticed from the corner of his eye that he was being followed by a silent sneak. There's only one thing to do in a situation like this, growled Rhubarb, and he nipped behind a tree to wait. Waited, and was still waiting, when he nearly jumped out of his fur as something tapped him on the shoulder. <gasps> Hello, said the shape. Am I who you're waiting for? Well, as a matter of fact, you are, squeaked Rhubarb. Now, what, what do you mean by following me? He went on in a slightly more growly way. Haven't you anything better to do than go about following fierce dogs? Well, no, as a matter of fact, I haven't, sighed the shape. You see, I was wondering if you could help me. I've been out of work all winter and really do need a job. What do you do? shrugged Rhubarb. I'm a shadow, said the shape. Well, everyone's got one of those, explained Rhubarb. You'd have to be something else. But I'm a shadow boxer, said the shadow. Oh, nice, said Rhubarb. Well, why didn't you say so earlier? Roll up, roll up, shouted Rhubarb at the top of his bark as he stepped from the shed, followed by his new friend. Come on now, folks. My shadow friend here will take on anyone else's shadow in a boxing match of not more than three rounds. Knock him out and win a prize. Come on now, folks. Roll up, roll up. Who's going to be the first? Shouted Rhubarb. Some of the bigger birds came forward and said their shadows would have a go. Custard pushed his way to the front and said that his shadow would bash the living daylights out of Rhubarb's boxer friend. Done, said Rhubarb. Shadow Boxer went into the ring and was all ready for a fair fight when out of Custard's corner a monster shadow who'd been especially bribed by Custard stepped forward and began to cheat right away. Oh! cried everyone. It's unfair! And just as Custard's monster was about to throttle poor little Shadow Boxer, Cloud came along and hid the sun right on the time. Scared, eh? 
snarled Custard, standing on top of the fence, making a nuisance of himself. I'll take you on myself, he went on. Come out, come out, wherever you are. Two can play at cheating, said Rhubarb in a smart sort of way, and nipped off to see a friend of his, whilst Custard was still boasting. Okay, Cloud, let's begin round two, shouted Rhubarb. Come on then, let's get on with it. I want me prize, shouted Custard. Cloud moved and Custard jumped into the ring. Who's next? He scoffed. Oh, who can beat Custard when he's such a big cheat? Squeaked everyone. Cobber can, grinned Rhubarb. Ha! Shrugged Custard. Who's ever heard of anyone called Cobber? I have, chuckled Rhubarb. Cobber the kangaroo. Good night, Pink, growled Rhubarb's big friend. And clobbered Custard round and round the ring. <laughs> was meant for nothing but hanging about in trees and catnapping and watching crickets cricketing. All the birds were snoozling and Custard was harmonicering when suddenly, without warning, one-legged trouble burst out of the shed with an idea to make everyone rich. Ha <laughs> ha! growled Rhubarb as he hobbled down through the heat wave dressed as an old sea dog with a plastic parrot called polystyrene glued to his shoulder. Jim lads, he went on. There's treasure enough for all who's game enough to sail with me. Arr. Oh, please go away, squeaked everyone. We're not interested today. It's far too hot. Arr. So then, be it upon your own heads, me arties. Be it upon your own heads, snivelled Rhubarb. I'll sail alone. Bar old Polly there, ah, we'll sail on the noonday tide, ah. That's just about right now, grinned Custard without opening his eyes. So be it, ah, Rhubarb, and pegged his way through the gap in the hedge, boarded his raft, and hoisted the skull and crossbones. Oh, thank goodness he's gone, sighed everyone, and slipped back into their daydreams as the afternoon wore on. When Rhubarb arrived at Treasure Island, he stepped onto the beach and his peg legs sank into the sand right up to his knee. Arr, he muttered. And then another, Arr, as he spotted an old boot floating in a rock pool. Great actors like Robert Newton and Long John Silver never had this trouble, he muttered, and booted off up the beach. Thirty-nine steps up the beach, said the map. Then steps to the left, one, two, three. Now steps to the right, one, two, three, one, two, three. It went on. That's a dance map, grizzled Rhubarb as he turned the map over and read the other side. The treasure is by the old tree marked with an X. Arr! Rhubarb started to dig with huffs and puffs and lots of R's, and polystyrene never said a word. Treasure, beamed Rhubarb, as he uncovered a treasure chest as big as a kennel. Ah. 
when Rurab arrived home, he ranted and raved and woke everyone up once again. Arr! See? The treasure's all mine! Now, ain't you sorry, eh? said he as he showered gold coins all over the garden. All mine! Ha-ha! <laughs> ain't you sorry? Custard picked up a coin, peeled off the gold foil and bit it just like they do in films. Oh, plain chocolate money, he groaned. Have you any milk chocolate ones or ones with raspberry centers? What? Screamed Rhubarb and bit on a coin. Chocolate money? Oh! Oh, oh that glitters is not gold, sang the birds in chorus as Custard tested the other coins. And Rhubarb was hopping mad. <laughs> the end of the year, when talk of autumn was in the air, the skylarking was over, and most of the birds had gone to Spain, Rubar was woken from a deep slumber by twittering and squeaking as had never been heard before. What's all that noise about? demanded Rubar, rubbing sleep from his eyes. The rest of the birds have gone away for the winter and left us out on a limb, squeaked a small swallow. Well, if they make as much noise as you do, I'm very glad they have, said Rhubarb in an angry sort of way. Small birds' wings freeze up in the winter if we stay here, said the swallow. Just then, Mrs. Hedgehog rolled by and said she'd be back in the spring. Tortoise was shutting up house as another leaf fluttered to the ground. Maybe I was too harsh on the birds, thought Rhubarb as he sat by the fire, making a piece of toast. Maybe I could help them. Maybe you could help yourself, my dear chap, Rhubarb thought, as an idea forced its way into his blank mind. A travel agency! That's what I'll do! Open a travel agency! What a brilliant idea, thought Rhubarb to himself, as he went down the garden to ask Custard to collect as many passengers as possible. But where will you go? asked Custard. I thought of that too, grinned Rhubarb, and nailed a huge notice to the tree. Rhubarb's travel agency, said the notice. First class travel to Goose Bay, Turkey, Bear Island, Reindeer Lake, Dogger Bank, Buffalo and Moose River. What a wonderful selection, but how will you get there? Sighed Custard. I've even thought of that, grinned Rhubarb smugly. By flying machine. Banging and hammering noises drifted from the shed as Rhubarb set to building his flying machine and dreaming of faraway places. At the end of the afternoon, when the little hand was on four and the big hand was on twelve, the shed began to creak and groan at the seams, and as the clock struck four, the roof burst off the shed and Rhubarb appeared in a huge balloon. What's that? Screeched Custard. A hot air balloon, announced Rhubarb. Well, with you driving it, you won't run out of fuel. <laughs> Chortled Custard. Where are the birds? Demanded Rhubarb. How oh, a trade wind blew by and they went off on that, said Custard. Just as Rhubarb was grumbling about all the trouble he'd been to to help the birds, the balloon ripped on a sharp twig and Rhubarb went hurtling off round the garden at tremendous speed. <laughs> and in 
climbed up at the top of the tree, feeling very deflated. My, you look deflated, said Custard, and got the giggles again, and made so much noise that Tortoise came out to see what was happening. The balloon has given me an idea, smiled Rhubarb. I think I'll call it a jet. And Custard collapsed. <laughs>